Hey guys, it's Max, and we're back with Battlecode 2015. This time, let's look at which units can kite which other units, and under which circumstances. This is a figure of the attack in white and sight range in gray for each unit in the game. This figure is posted on the website. When you see MD, that means movement delay. What we're looking for is a unit that has a small movement delay and a large attack range. And right away, the drone stands out. Comparing it to the miner and the soldier, its attack range is larger on all sides. That makes it a good candidate for a test whether this can kite the other unit. In order to be able to kite the other unit, the combination of delays that it has for moving and attacking needs to be lower than the delay for just the other unit moving. Because after all, the other unit is just trying to go there and never gets a chance to attack. To set up one of these tests can seem very difficult. It might seem like you have to set up two players on a specific map, have them spawn the necessary tech trees, and move the units into position, and then have the units change their behavioral pattern to run the test. And this is a lot of work. However, it's not actually that hard. All you have to do is make a map using the map editor, for example, which now has separate releases for Mac, Linux, and Windows. And the map editor is available on the website. Make a map that's nice and open, and then edit it with a standard text editor. When you open it up, this is the map unittest.xml, you'll see something like this. I've added these two lines. What they do is they let me put in other types of units. It's very simple. So what I'm doing here is I define that the character lowercase d means put in a drone, that is to say robot type dot drone, and give it to team A. And I can put as many of these lines as I want for different types of units belonging to different teams. So uh, lowercase s is a soldier. And then later on in the map, see this is a 2D representation of the map. It's just, uh, it doesn't look like that because this is one line and it's wrapped onto two lines because the screen is only so wide. So somewhere in here there's lowercase a and somewhere else there's a lowercase d, lowercase s. Uh, I can't really see it. But you can put units wherever you want. Uh, you can even make these maps programmatically. And that's what we'll do later, but for now, this will serve as our testing platform. Let's run that test and see whether the drone can kite the soldier. In this case, both of them will get supply from a nearby headquarters. The result is actually the same when they are unsupplied, which kind of makes sense because supply should affect them both equally. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to hit pause and I'll rewind. Then I'll press the letter U to make the OR disappear, just to make it a little easier to see. And I'll be, use, I'll be using this forward step button to move forward in time. In the initial stage, both units are spawned and they have this white outline, which indicates that they don't have supply. In the next round, the headquarters transfers enough to last them for the rest of the simulation. The soldier is here at the right, and he'll be moving to the left toward the drone. The drone is waiting for the soldier to come to him, and the drone will run away to the left while shooting at the soldier. I'll step forward. We're looking to see if the drone takes any damage. Okay, now the soldier is in range. You might say, why doesn't the soldier shoot the drone? Well, it just moved here, and so it has a movement and an attack delay. During this time, the drone actually gets to run away. And this is repeated. Yet the drone has enough time to continue attacking. The drone has moved a total of seven tiles to the left and taken zero damage. So as long as there's enough room and both units are supplied or both units are unsupplied, the drone can actually take on a soldier no problem. That's pretty interesting. There's one complicating factor and that's the execution order of robots. One subtlety of battle code is that not every robot executes at the same time. This is how they don't have problems with both trying to enter the same tile, for example. They actually execute in order 
and the execution order uh, is I think related to the robot ID number so the drone which has ID number 2900 is going to execute first before the soldier which has ID number 16000 and that makes a big difference because whichever one executes first it'll actually move before the other one can sense where its location is so it actually does make a difference to what the game state looks like for each robot this is one of those problems that's very hard to track down if you're not aware of it the details of the um, move sequence are available in the game specs under an appendix but what we really are wondering is if I flip the drone and the soldier ID numbers will the outcome be different? uh-huh well you might say how do you change the ID number you didn't see me put an ID number anywhere and in fact I didn't it's automatically assigned when the map is built I think it might have something to do with the layout like maybe it assigns the robots from left to right so what I did is I simply switched the positions I put the drone on the right and the soldier on the left let's go to that map so for this I have a whole different map and a whole different AI I mean the only change I made was that now the combat is moving to the right instead of to the left so this is unit test 2 and it's under unit test supply 2 a different map let's look at the result might take a moment to load here what do you think do you think it depends on the unit ID or do you think it'll be the same for both hmm you thought it wasn't gonna work did you yeah it's just a little slow now there we go it's already happened it's so fast you can hardly see it okay so there it is it's moving away and the soldier now has robot ID 2972 and the drone has ID 16,000 so yeah the drones doing okay so it works either way doesn't matter what the ID is very interesting the next thing that I'd like to look at is if it's possible for the soldier to kite the basher so I've got a third unit test for that and that's the last one we'll do Okay, unit test three, unit supply three, and press plus. Now there are very there are various ways to make this work, um, so we might try a couple of them, depending on the time. It's kind of weird that my computer sometimes takes a while to get the map set up this way. There's nothing I can do about it as far as I know. The different situations are. What's the difference between the two entering combat with one another without moving or with attempting to kite? Now, there's something like a partial kiting. Is there some benefit to running away and shooting at the same time, even if the enemy can catch up? Can you somehow reduce the amount of turns that the enemy can attack you, even if you can't eliminate it entirely? That's one of those questions we have. So in this simulation, the soldier is on the right, and the basher is on the left and the soldier does not move at all now let's go back a little bit <clears throat> and we'll look at the supply both of them are fully supplied okay so with both fully supplied the basher is able to close the distance and destroy the soldier just barely so that almost makes it look like the basher is objectively better than the soldier because it was even able to close the range and deal the damage. Let's see if some kind of micromanagement of these units can change the result, like for example if the soldier runs away. So I'll go into the file for unit test 3 and I'll adjust the code somewhat. This is the code where the soldier tries to run away, so I'll re-enable this code. So now it will try to run away. Let's see the effect. Do you think maybe trying to run away will help? Or maybe it will be like in a horror movie when the main character tries to run away, but it really only makes things worse because they just trip over a branch and then they're immediately caught. 
So is there some benefit to running away, or does it in fact make things worse and leave the basher off with extra hit points? Let's find out. Okay, so we see the soldier is attacking and running, alternating. And look at that. It's totally turned around. The soldier now has about half its hit points left, and the basher is totally gone. So this is something like a partial kiting, and it's definitely worth considering when you write your players. Another advantage of this partial kiting is that it reduces the chances that that basher is going to be able to hit multiple targets, because those targets can be moving in different directions away. It can't pursue them all at once, that's for sure. Okay, very interesting. Lastly, let's, in let's inspect the case that only the blue unit has supply. In this case, can the soldier kite the basher and take no damage at all? This is really important because this is giving us an indication of whether supply is really necessary and to what extent. So in this case, I'm only going to have one of the headquarters transfer supplies. Team B. The other, the other headquarters will be very greedy and hold on to his supplies for no good reason, and we'll see how badly it dooms that basher. So I've changed the code, and I'm running the simulation. This will be the last one. Okay, so we're seeing the basher approach, and the poor guy has no supply. He's got this white bracket around him indicating no supplies. So this leaves this fully supplied soldier at 3,200 supply at a significant advantage. Let's see the result. So I'm stepping forward, and I see the basher did deal some damage, but now the soldier has almost full health. So we can see that it has significantly more health than it would otherwise have. It's not fully able to kite the basher in this simulation, but it makes a gigantic difference. I hope these videos have given you an idea for the effect of kiting, the effect of supply, for different units in Battlecode. You can use this to develop your own ideas about micromanaging your units to get the most out of them, both in terms of supplying them and in terms of running away and attacking at the same time. I hope this helps. See you next time.